In this video, I want to go ahead and cover the Beretta 92FS M9 and, you know, the clones therein of maintenance and some considerations and things you might want to look out for. Now, this platform has a good and bad reputation depending on who you talk to. Now, the reputation, the main reputation that's spread around is the M9's reputation where in the beginning it had some slide failures, locking block issues, and it still kind of does have some locking block issues, but it's not really their fault necessarily. I'd reference, I would, I would send you guys to uh, the Small Arm Solutions uh, channel where uh, the guy goes over uh, the history of the M9 and why it had certain problems and he kind of dispels a lot of the myths there and based on my experience I saw uh, I saw where he was coming from from my time in how things weren't really Beretta made at that time and the real history behind it it being an ammunition problem not really a, a gun problem so anyways I just wanted to say that in my experience these pistols have been very durable they've stood the test of time and as long as they're maintained, just like any other gun, as long as they're maintained and parts are replaced just like any other machine or a vehicle or whatever, it's going to be durable. This thing has set a lot of records and it's done amazing things and these pistols have improved, at least the Beretta pistols have improved. Now this is a clone from Gerson in Turkey, uh, very similar in uh, what you would find in, say, the Brazilian copy, the Taurus PT-92. Um, pretty similar in the design that they use, the patent overrun on the original 92F. So, anyways, we're going to evaluate this along with the updated Breda M9A3 because this actually has all the upgrades, for pretty much all the upgrades that uh, the Breda wanted to give the military to in increase longevity and stuff like that and knowing that they're not very good at maintaining their pistols. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing to consider is that these pistols runs off, run off springs, all right? Springs supply tension to the slide to keep it in battery and also to kind of time the uh, and resist the slide movement and kind of time how, how long it's able to uh, stay in battery. and if you are having uh, problems with things like failures to extract and uh, stovepipes or something like that, there's a lot of different springs that could actually be causing that, but failures to extract uh, where basically the cartridge isn't wanting to come out of the chamber, that could be a timing issue with the recoil spring or it could be an extractor spring. So uh, on this M9A3, actually what I had to do is I had to get a 92FS uh, ex extractor because this one was chipped. The spring tension was fine uh, and the spring was completely new but it was chipped and so I had to replace it with a, a 92FS extractor so you know if your extractor is uh, chipped or something like that then it can give you problems with uh, extraction and you'll think that it might be a recoil timing issue uh, where it's, it's just it's so incredibly weak but you know, there's different uh, things that could happen, so you got to make sure that your extractor is in good condition, the spring tension on the extractor is good, and the recoil spring is still good. Now, the recoil springs uh, can last anywhere from five to 10,000 rounds, depending on the kind of ammunition, how often you're shooting it, the lubrication, you know, etc. I, I shoot pretty hot loads, and this thing has seen about 5,000 rounds so far, and it's done pretty friggin' well. So, pretty durable pistol. And the recoil spring still has a good amount of tension in it, but you know, in a couple thousand rounds, I'll probably replace it and get it nice and sexy. So the extractor, usually if your extractor is doing fine, then the tension is gonna be good enough. I mean, these things are pretty reliable as long as you're not chipping the extractor like I did. I'm not sure what caused it, but it doesn't really matter. Just check up on them. And I would say every like 15,000 rounds, I would. I would change out the uh, the spring on the extractor and probably just the extractor itself just to be safe. So it doesn't really cost too much to do that. So the next thing to look at is the trigger return spring and I'm going to go ahead and break this thing down. So right here at the bottom here you see this little hook right here. Well that's the trigger return spring right in there and this piece returns the trigger to the front. This is what causes it to go forward. So 
Without this spring, the trigger bar wouldn't move forward at all. So with that trigger return spring, you also got to look at this trigger bar spring right here. So this trigger bar spring actually pushes up on the trigger bar and engages it on the hammer. So when you actually pull the trigger in single action, it'll go. Now if I were to unhook this, like so, I just unhooked it, and if I was to do, if I was to break the spring, this is what I would get. It wouldn't actually hook on the actual hammer, but now it will because I provided upward tension. So I'll see if I can get that back on. There we go. So I just snapped it back in. So you want to watch out for the trigger return spring and the trigger bar spring. I would say, you know, the trigger return spring on the early models of the Berettas were going to have the life of about the recoil spring, if not a little less, especially if you're dry firing a lot. So you've got to keep that in mind when you're when you're looking at replacing springs and what you might want to keep up with. These are pretty cheap uh, to, to buy. I'm not sure about the availability of these because I haven't really uh, had any issues with the trigger return spring uh, and the uh, trigger bar spring, but I, I just know trigger return springs are actually probably the biggest problem for double action pistols because when you practice a lot you're getting that full length that full compression on or full intended compression on the spring and even in single action it stays under tension like this so when you're doing that it's remaining under tension and it can weaken it so you know it, it's just a, another wear item, if you will. This one doesn't go under too much tension until it's disconnected and the trigger's being held to the rear. And you know, if we go ahead and disconnect it, we disconnect the, uh, the trigger bar, basically this piece pushing down with the disconnector, this is part of the trigger bar. If it's in the downward tension, it's being compressed. So the longer it's held down, the more compression it's going to be under. So it shouldn't wear too fast, but that's just something you need to uh, be careful of. So the next thing is the locking block. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble both of these pistols and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so here I have both the barrels with the locking blocks installed. This right here is from the Gearson, which is based off the 92F with a few enhancements. But this basically has like a little bit of a modifi modified version of the first generation 92F locking block. Now I'll go ahead and point out the obvious dif differences, which is one, this locking block actually comes right out. And I'll just point out the difference in the walls here. So with the with the M9A3, I'll take the plunger out and slide this out just a little bit so you can see the thickness difference. You can see how thick the M9A3 wall is on this on these sides right here. This is a lot thicker than this right here. And this channel right here is a lot wider than this. They closed it up, gave it a little bit more metal. Also, this is pointed out in the small arm solution video but you can see that there's a cutout on the M9A3, the relief cut right here. This one does not. However, what you will notice on, on the M9A3 is it's pretty, it's kind of squared off or rounded at least on the lug shape right here. Whearas on here, there's actually a rearward swoop at the front and I believe that was actually to relieve pressure uh, and actually prevent as much uh, I, I guess you could say uh, relieve some of the shearing forces because if you notice here, let me go ahead and turn this around, you can see that this side actually is dealing with more force than this side right here. And I believe that's when the barrel is trying to actually turn and it's rotating this side into the, uh, into the slide more. So this side seems to get a little bit more wear than this side overall, but you know, there's, that's just kind of how it is, it seems. So, yeah, again, you can see the right side is a little bit more, you know, it, it sees a little bit more wear than the other side. So it seems like it's pushing like that up against the, uh, up against the slide as it's going back. So it gets a little bit more wear. So, yeah, as you can see here, pretty much, 
just a, a very thin piece, but it seems like they added a little bit more uh, length, but it's really just an illusion because of the swoop right here on the locking block. Now, the original locking blocks for the M9 uh, were supposed to last about 15,000, 20,000 rounds or something like that, 10, 15,000 rounds, right? Well, this updated locking block, uh, they proved it to last almost 30,000 rounds, so almost double the original locking block. Now, because this is a bit of a different design, because of how it swooped back, they may have actually been able to relieve the pressure, so you may actually be looking at 20,000 rounds with Sammy's back ammunition. And depending on how you're treating it and everything else, yep, locking block just comes right out. So, you know, that's something to uh, consider there. So these pistols, both of these pistols are actually supposed to be designed to uh, withstand a NATO, NATO spec ammunition, which is basically plus P ammunition. The Gearson pistols, uh, they're standard ammunition. They don't have SAMI spec in uh, Turkish, uh, uh, in Turkey, or even pretty much the rest of the world doesn't go off SAMI spec. We're the only ones that lower the pressure of our rounds. Their standard um, for their pistols is NATO ammunition. So they estimate the service life for these to be about uh, 25,000 rounds in the barrels to be around 50, which I've seen pistols last a lot longer than that, or at least barrels last a lot longer than that. So anyways, you know, that's just a, a maintenance consideration for the locking blocks. Unfortunately for these clones, if you have something like this where it's swooped back, um, you're probably not gonna be uh, having a very easy time getting something like this uh, into here. It's just not going to be made for it. And also they made they made the uh, little uh, pieces here, <laughs> the little uh, pins here a little bit different. The front ends of these plungers uh, actually are a little bit different as well. So yeah, so you can't really uh, take all of what Breda has done and put it into these clones necessarily especially because the slide matches the locking block uh, swoop right here. That's just what I'm going to call it. So anyways, on to the next thing. So the hammer springs, the hammer spring is down here and it's what gives the tension to the hammer, gives the resistance and when it's in single action, gives it all its tension to smack the firing pin, which will smack the primer. If this thing weakens, like it's been in a, a cock state for a while, it can weaken it. Or if there's just been a lot of firing repetitions, you know, practicing and stuff, you can wear it out. Now, all these springs are going to wear at once as you're, as you're shooting the pistol. But, you know, the more you dry fire or leave it in a cock position, the more one spring is going to wear a, than another. So the hammer spring in this condition is going to uh, wear as well as the uh, trigger return spring. So you got to keep that all in mind right there. So <clears throat> when you're uh, wearing this down, you can actually start getting like primer strikes. And you know when you're firing the pistol, the firing pin spring that holds the firing pin back it, up in the slide, it'll actually start wearing. It'll make it a lot easier for the firing pin to move back and forth. And you know, that's really not that big of a deal, but it's something that you might want to replace every now and then to prevent it from bashing too hard up against the firing pin, uh, firing pin block or something like that. Uh, it, because there is a limitation on how far it can go and it's actually stopped by the extractor itself. So yes, you do want to replace those springs to keep the tension nice and I recommend whatever springs it works with, you know, when you're firing, you know, if you're going to upgrade the strength of the firing pin spring by actually replacing it, I'd recommend also replacing the hammer spring because if you have a weak hammer spring, a strong, a strong firing pin spring, you're going to start getting light primer strikes. That's just kind of how it is. So the first thing I would replace is the hammer spring, but this is just how the pistol works. So just got to keep that in mind. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the decockers, and I'll go ahead and just use this one. I have the G model for the M9A3, so as you see, it just goes down, and that's it. It just has a little spring that is right in here, so there's just a little bit of tension there, and it flings right back. And you can actually install these on any, pretty much any of the 92 uh, series of pistols. I'm not sure about these clones, but I'm going to give it a try and I will uh, do another video on my success or failure. So what I'm talking about as far as the 
as far as the decocker uh, and safety is there's little ball bearings inside here that actually keep the tension and you can see the cutout right here where it would actually rest and up in here this little indent right here that's where the bearing that's right under this level lever actually goes in and there's a spring behind the bearing so I actually had an M9 when I was in the Marines where it was so weak you could actually shake the pistol and it would come off uh, it would come off safe or it would go on on safe and uh, it wouldn't decock but if, it, if I was just wigging, wiggling the slide around uh, when it was off it would just freely go between the two positions so you know keep that in mind because <laughs> that can actually be a pretty big problem now if you're able to wiggle your pistol and decock it like that you gotta keep in mind the way this thing works you got this little piece rotating here and it pushes down on this piece right here which when you push this down sends the hammer forward now what this is actually doing is there's a little pin in here I don't know if you can see this but right here on on the right side here from your perspective this little channel right here yeah this little channel houses the sear spring so that sear spring can actually get very worn making the trigger pretty light and that actually is the spring that is compressed and you're basically just moving the sear forward and it goes forward now if you're worried about the hammer going full force you know on the on the um, firing pin here you gotta understand that this is basically a little striker plunger a firing pin plunger that's separate from the actual firing pin itself so it had this has to be hit and this is under spring tension and then it has to hit the firing pin it has to hit it with enough force however this is attached to this whole rod across here so very quickly when you go down like this you are taking this plunger which operates independently of the firing pin and pushing it forward uh, or rotating it up out of the way hiding it so when the hammer goes down basically at this point the hammer is not even going to go down at this point and it's already out of the way so let me go ahead and just demonstrate that really quick on here I'll just lock the uh, lock this piece on and I'll just line it up but watch this it's already out of the way from here and then by the time it goes up it's already out of the way so it's never gonna hit it and even if it did even if for some reason this plunger just didn't want to be attached to this uh, these levers anymore which basically is impossible you have a firing pin block right there this is not going to be activated unless you pull the trigger pushing this is not going to activate this piece right here which pushes up on the uh, firing pin block so you actually have to pull the trigger and it'll have enough force but until you pull the trigger this piece is not going to be able to push up so it's a pretty safe system so other than that there's really not much that can wear on these on these pistols so it, it's it, there's a lot of concern with a lot of people about the durability of the of the Beretta 92 series of pistols because of some story legends or whatever when in all actuality this is a heavy pistol this is a uh, aluminum frame uh, pistol this is a pretty hardcore pistol uh, it's pretty big has a bit of weight to it but it's a really hardcore pistol very durable and it's actually proven to be reliable when you know they're actually being maintained and stuff they're they're loved they're extremely loved so you know you got to keep that uh, in mind that myth versus fact it, it can be hard to distinguish and we want to trust everybody who just opens their mouth and that's a big problem so hopefully you do your research don't take my word for it go ahead and search around check out small arms solutions uh, and any kind of references he has go ahead and research for yourself as well read everything question everything all right you guys have a good one